uh, good evening everyone it's a wonderful sunday evening and we are here together with aditi ma'am and shruti ma'am to have a wonderful discussion about rediscovering gandhari in the lockdown so let me formally introduce both of the authors that have joined us today so now we have aditi banerji she is an attorney by profession a prolific writer and speaker about hinduism and hindu american experience she enjoys wandering the himalayas and reading voraciously so thank you so much for joining us aditi thank you for having me yes let me not forget to tell that she is the author of the curse of gandhari which is totally an amazing book based around the main uh, point of discussion we have today gandhari for joining us with us we also have shruti harjini okay thank you shruti ma'am for joining us she is the author of mahabharati which is a run brilliant book written around the five women of mahabharat that we already have learned from generations but she has given it a refreshing take now she is a bharatnatyam dancer a lover of literature and a connoisseur of french and sanskrit thank you so much for joining us shruti ma'am thank you it's pleasure to be here we begin with our discussion so i have this question these questions with me that will help us guide this evening into a uh, productive conversation so starting with the first question which i think is a uh, very very uh, curious even when what the people have like yes this is something that we need to discuss today so why does anyone not name their child as gandhar can you a point in the out for this uh, aditi ma'am what about you um that's a that's an interesting question so i think uh i think uh, mostly mainly to open uh, sorry i'm Uses all of her one hundred sons in the war. She has a very yeah. Those are very difficult. Parents so for their children. She's someone who's respected. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Aditi, ma'am. I've just got a message in the uh, comments that uh, your voice is a little. Uh, so is this better? Is this better? If you all can tell us, is this, is this better from Aditi's side? Because I'm able to hear yeah, you better. quite clearly. Okay. Okay. If you could just repeat the last few sentences for the uh, people in the chat in the comments. Sure. Um, so I was just saying, uh, looking at Dan Harry's life, it's tragic, but it, it also has a personality. Uh, she had certain. Okay, thank you, and that's actually very uh, true. Uh, when I look at it from your point of view, I can totally see why people would not like to name their child as Gandhari. Uh, Shruti ma'am, would you like to add something to this uh, uh, conversation that we are having? Yes, uh, I think uh, I agree with Aditi ji. Uh, she is such a tragic character, and she has suffered. She has been fighting with her own destiny throughout her life. And uh, generally, when we name our child, we look for painting a beautiful picture of their future, and nobody would like to uh, have their uh, child being named with a person who has. who has been accused by society for so long which has suffered so much in her life and uh, although she, be, she being strong and very righteous person uh, we i would say that uh, when we look at uh, at story of mahabharata as a 
beautiful canvas painted by Maharshi Vyasa. I would say that uh, character of Gandhari is like a pencil sketch. And when we are painting a uh, future of our child with uh, vibrant and uh, uh, various colors, no one would like to look at that character stage because we always look forward for a vibrant color. Yes, yes. That is so wonderfully worded, uh, Shruti ma'am. That's really true. We as, anybody as parents would like their children's life to be colorful and vibrant. Uh, thank you so much. That really, you know, puts things into perspective for us. So, uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, this is something that I would like you to remark on. So, there is this thought that limitless suffering equals to Gandhari. So, what does uh, this mean? Is it true and to what extent is this true? Uh, if I agree that Gandhari suffers a lot, but uh, she, uh, as I said, she has been victim to her own destiny. But what stands out for Gandhari is she does not merely surrender herself to the destiny. She, she protests, she rebels against what is happening around her. Although uh, she... We, we are into lockdown, so we can very well connect with her now how difficult it is to self-restrain uh, and she has like, blindfolded herself for uh, almost more, more than half of her, her life and, uh, what, and it is her own decision. So, Dhritarashtra is born blind. But this blindness is new. It comes to Gandhari's life only after marriage. But she accustoms uh, herself to that situation, and she uh, she stands. She uh, maybe I I can imagine her uh, in the initial stage of her lying, struggling herself to get accustomed with this new newly come blindness. But then this uh, the, uh, she still. Uh, come forward to see the light and hope in her life and she takes very strong decisions, she takes strong actions and that's what uh, that, uh, differentiates her in the, uh, in the entire empire of darkness. Yes, thank you. That's really an amazing point. I think we both can agree that yes, Gandhari is a force to be reckoned with because uh, her point of view for life even it went her, it took a 180 degree uh, turn when she got to know that she's going to marry someone who is you know blind so that's really nicely said thank you shruti ma'am and uh, so let, let us go to the next question now i think this question will have a lot of uh, thoughts from you all and i'm very really excited to know that now what do you how do you think gandhari's life or her thought process has been affected because she was surrounded by Shakuni since childhood, Dhritarashtra after marriage, and Duryodhan as a mother. So she's been surrounded by these men. Do you think her life or perspective towards life has changed because of this? I think it, it definitely is. Uh, righteousness of their viewpoint uh, or, or, or she agrees with what they're doing uh, is that she cannot die from and because she's such a loyal wife and, and mother she's also not able to turn away from these. she still wants her sons to, she wants them to survive she's not able to, to turn away from them. and so she 
becomes bound by them. Possible that it's part of her. I don't know if it's really the biggest step in the reason of these cultures within the that's the CACs, and I think leaders can have their own interpretations. Yes, actually, that's really true. You know, leaders can, uh, you know, take it into their own uh, perspectives. And uh, the way she has dealt with motherhood is completely, uh, many people have debated on it since uh, a lot of many years. So very refreshing to see and look, uh, listen to your point of view, Aditi, ma'am. What about you, Shruti, ma'am? What do you think about this statement? Yes, I do agree with Aditi ji because uh, her motherhood is not simple. Uh, e we are into lockdowns. So just uh, I'll come to this everyday situation in every home which has uh, kids. So in lockdown, we all know as a literate parents, we all know how dangerous screen is for our kids. But when we have a lot of things to do, when we have, we have to juggle between our home and work thing, don't we all expose our kids to a screen? Can we restrain them to the extent that we should be doing? And now imagine uh, mm, Gandhari into the same kind of situation. She is blindfolded. She is in the. Uh, she is queen of the uh, dynasty, but uh, that dynasty is patriarch. So she the, every time when she uh, she can't. She has all the responsibilities of motherhood, but she doesn't have rights to ensure that these responsibilities are being carried uh, in a right way. And so her motherhood is not simple, but she is blindfolded. And uh, her um, since since her childhood, I can imagine Gandhari being constrained by a. Uh, male member of her family in the childhood uh, uh, shakuni is her brother and we all know the kind of role he plays in the uh, in this entire war of kurukshetra we know that uh, dhritarashtra has his own dreams he although he is blind he is uh, he is uh, he's painting colorful picture of his son being uh, coronated on the throne of Kuru dynasty, and he he has that uh, strong will since uh, since birth of uh, birth of his son. So only, he has only uh, one thing in his mind that my son should be coronated, and that strong will has uh, impacted the rest of the uh, life of his son as well and his wife as well. We know that he never listened to his wife. Although Gandhari keeps, uh, Gandhari rebooks him a lot of time, he never, uh, he never minded to pay a heed to what his wife is saying. When it comes to son, uh, when uh, she has tried her best to give the best of her, uh, uh, her uh, morals, values to Duryodhana. If we see, if the kind, if we uh, look uh, carefully, uh, the arguments that um, Duryodhana put forward every time, we know that he knows what is dharma. But then he wants to interpret dharma or in his own manner. Whatever is beneficial to him, he will do that, and he will never pay, um, pay attention to uh, what his mother is saying. So um, I don't. So lot of us um, accuse her as mother that she haven't taught uh, correct models to her son. But I don't think she failed to teach correct model uh, models. She um, somehow in the situation she is, she is not able to correctly uh, guide them how to implement what what is correct and what is wrong. Because that rightness, she, their path of righteousness is blind. And therefore, uh, when it comes to her, uh, so her life, Gandhari's life is some product of all these things around her. The, all the members that the, the decisions taken, the actions taken by other male member of her uh, of her family member, her, may it be her brother, may it be her 
husband or may it be her own sons and not just one one son decides and rest of 99 follows him and not his mother and that's the tragedy of her life and but when it comes to uh, analyzing that i would say that um, when i remember here uh, that when we used to be in school our, our drawing teacher used to always say that you you put a black bracket to your painting so that the main uh, that so that the main picture will come out vibrantly and i think that same thing happens because maharshi vyasa has painted this pencil sketch in the uh, uh, in the um, i suppose it to the uh, these bl uh, three black characters of her uh, life and therefore this uh, therefore i think the character of gandhari comes out very vividly and that's she because she stands out in the environment of in the uh, in mighty envy and evil that is so wonderfully put i can agree i can see a lot of things more clearly now with all of your uh, points i'm sure aditi ma'am has also uh, kind of agreed to many of her things if you would like to have if you like to take this conversation forward we can have something else uh, right now there is one uh, comment in the uh, section below that did gandhari stigmatize blindness now this has been said by mukund now we will address this sometime so aditi ma'am would you like to comment on this sure that that's a it's a wonderful question when i was writing the story um, this question that i was wrestling with uh, so on the one side we see that by blindfolding herself um,
because he is a shrine that is unsuitable to be the king. It's because he's blind uh, to karma, he's blind to his morality, because of self imposed blindness. He doesn't try to govern, he doesn't try to rule, he doesn't try to, um, even when Fandu has abdicated the throne, uh, he's not an active ruler. He's blindness and his own emotions. And that kind of blindness is much more debilitating for them than the physical blindness. Um, so I think that's Thank you so much. That is really uh, impactful way of thinking, actually, because I am changing my perspectives today listening to both of you amazing ladies. So uh, let's move to Shruti ma'am for the same question. Do you think uh, Gandhari stigmatized blindness? Uh, I agree with what Aditi ji said. Uh, we all know that Gandhari blindfold, uh, took a decision to uh, blindfold herself when she he hears that her would-be husband is blind. So I think uh, this is this is one part of the story. Uh, it's her same self-imposed physical blindness. She can't see the world. But then uh, her blind, I think that her blindness is symbolic as well. She, uh, we all know that she is not born blind. She can see the world, but it's her uh, decision not to to share the pain of her husband and not to see the world and uh, so she is not disabled so, uh, she can see the world so if we uh, throw light on the rest part of the story we all can uh, agree that she is although she is blindfolded she is watchful she is not blind to what is happening around her she is watchful in her mind and uh, thoughtful in uh, her actions and uh, but we we also know that those actions those thoughts don't uh, are not able to make the impact the kind of impact that they should have to be and uh, and therefore i think that uh, the blindness of gandhari is also symbolic as though she is it's not that she is blindfolded she is not watchful it's that the rest of the world has been uh, blind to her, has been blind to what she's trying to say, has been blind to her thoughts, has been blind to her emotions. So it's uh, symbolic as well. That's uh, very uh, refreshing to uh, you know think about that uh, Gandhari's blindness to be symbolic with the view of society. So I think that really, uh, you know, makes us think about the hidden meanings to certain actions taken by these uh, women in the uh, Indian mythology. So thank you so much. And uh, we move on to the next question, uh, which is, uh, what are your uh, thoughts and remarks for Dharmashil Lata of Gandhari that is written according to uh, Mahamuni Vyas? Do you have any thoughts or remarks regarding this? Aditi ma'am, if you could lead up with this question. Sorry, it cut out a little bit. Uh, regarding what? Uh, regarding Dharm Shil Lata, that he has to, uh, named Gandhari as Dharm Shil Lata. Do you have any thoughts regarding this? Do you uh, think is it, you know, is, is it something kind of a positive message or uh, to the women around in the world? So I think there are many things to uh, from Gandhari. So one is, um, as I said, she, she's very devout um, and she knew and understood karma as a Christian. When she was along, this was karma to the Yodhana right before the war. It's a very long speech that she delivers in the, uh, in the Sabha. And it's, it's very um, articulate and nuanced and it's wise. Not at all that way. When she hears that uh, he has given birth, she has been bearing uh, her over a year. Basically, she so um, she becomes so 
claimed uh, uh, by that she has to see the part with respect to the part of 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 the part and then she waits another day. Thinking about the love that she has as a mother, and you know, imagine what a terrible pregnancy it is to bear one hundred, you know, children. About like, Zanhari, good or bad, like good or bad as a woman, good or bad as a mother. And we don't ask the same questions of other, you know, great characters like like Kishma, for example, who was so noble, but yet he made this fateful decision uh, to, 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 to not have a children to become celibate. And that actually started the entire war. And again and again, he refuses uh, when Satyavati comes back to him and says, you know, now you should continue the line, um, but, but he refuses each, each time. Um, and yet we, we accept that there's this ambiguity or complexity or nuance uh, to his characters. But when it comes to women, we always want to be able to judge. And I think with Dantari, in the final moments, you cannot really judge her. Given the time, given the society, she was a strong, virtuous, devout woman. Um, and yet, in some ways, she was limited uh, by her own self-imposed uh, constraints or, or, or flaws. And, and I think you know, that in and of itself is a lesson to us, um, you know, to, to not always be so judgmental, but to be empathetic, uh, to learn from, from what others have gone through, to learn from her, both her strengths and also her, her flaws. Um, and that despite all of that, despite being flawed, you can still admire and, and respect her, even if she's not really uh, heroic in, in, in that sense. So, yes, Aditi, ma'am, I truly agree with many of those points that you have put forward. I actually remember from the introduction, uh, introductory chapter of your book where you have written that though Gandhari did not get accolades and names like, you know, uh, the other women from Mahabharat, that is uh, uh, even, uh, sorry, uh, Kunti or the other, uh, other women that you have uh, all heard about, still she stands for strength and, you know, uh, power. And all of those moments that you have told me that really, you know, connects with us right now as well in this modern society. So it's really uh, eye-opening to think about such events, actually. Thank you. Now, uh, what about, uh, over to you, Shruti, ma'am, if you could just uh, comment about this. What do you think uh, is the image of Gandhari, how we as modern women can connect to that? I agree with uh, what Aditi said. Uh, I and I agree to her that when it comes to man, we always want, uh, we always uh, give them some kind of convey, um, concession. And when it comes to women, we all, we are always in a hurry to judge them. When uh, it's so, in the example of Mahabharata, it comes out so vividly as Aditi ji rightly said that we never question Bhishma. We we don't judge him uh, so uh, so much for his uh, decision of taking a vow. And in fact, he is being revered uh, with this name uh, Bhishma, who is um, who is form on his vow. But uh, when it comes to Gandhari, we always criticizes her for taking that woe of uh, wearing a blindfold for the rest of her life. And uh, if I could add to that, at least uh, Satyavati, when uh, when times come, when uh, it, the Kuru dynasty is on the verge of extinguishment, she gave charge to Bhishma to revoke his woe. Uh, she asked him that you you marry to my uh, daughter-in-law and you sit on the throne of Kuru and this woe is being taken for me and therefore I am releasing you from this woe. But I think not this, uh, uh, Gandhari is not being given a chance to re uh, revoke his uh, her woe in any of uh, her lifetime. Even Dhritarashtra could have asked her uh, that, uh, okay, you are doing it for me and uh, I ask you to uh, tear off your blindfold, and he never does that. 
and that's a uh, that's a kind of suffering that women undergoes and uh, even though uh, it requires so much of self restraint to follow that go uh, throughout her life she is dutiful wife and she follows that for uh, till the end of her life and we uh, and uh, we all we also see that um, although she is uh, she is mother she has she has never failed to check on her sons she knows that they are wrong she knows that they, they what they are doing is not right but, and she also has trained to rebook them and she has trained uh, no mother would accept the mistakes of her own son but she knows that her uh, sons are wrong and therefore she keeps repeating this thing yato dharma tato jaya i think this this is what gandhari that is her strength she is righteous and uh, she uh, she can judge between right and wrong i think uh, it, for, this is a great lesson to be learned uh, for all of us as women that we have to see our kinsmen with uh, with such a clarity of thoughts with with such a clarity of mind and i think that what gandhari is and that's what we can learn from gandhari thank you so much uh, shruti ma'am and aditi ma'am you really given us lot of advices uh, and i'm sure uh, many of us are going uh, ahead with lot of uh, values and virtues now <laughs> thank you uh, now the next question is uh, what do you think is the value of women's opinion uh, that is uh, in respect to pandavas versus the kauravas so is there any difference between a women's opinion for both of these uh, uh, group of brothers in one clan that's a that's a great question um i i, I would say for, for the pandavas uh, for example you see that how much influence kunti has and then later draupadi has right so when um after draupadi swayamvara when they bring draupadi back um when kunti says you must share what you have brought uh, among the brothers um they they follow this and they follow it literally so all of the brothers brothers marry uh marry draupadi uh so the idea that you know kunti was such a virtuous woman that her her word had so much power and strength to it that as soon as her word was said they had to they had to obey it um uh, not only that there are many instances um in the, the time that when the pandava the uh, uh, house of lack has been burned down um they're saying the villagers are being tormented by this asuka by vasuka and uh, she tells them you know we have been staying here we've been you know um taken care of by them so we have a duty to to, get to protect the villagers so in that moment, she's instructing them not just as a as a mother is instructing her sons but as a queen is instructing um her you know the the heirs of the throne on, on how to rule and how to govern how to be dharmic and they listen to her um uh, and uh, the the pandavas are always learning systems whenever they hear good counsel they learn in their times in the forest all these rishis come to them they learn from them um and so it's not just a question about opinion of of women but opinion of anyone that they encounter because um as when you're on the path of karma everyone can be your guru and so you must always be open to to wisdom and self reflection and understanding the mistakes so they see that with the kunti and then with dropadi as well so it's it's only because of dropadi that the pandavas are able to go to war that they're able to find the strength and the courage that yes we are going to fight this war um not not for ourselves but for for dharma and she is constantly reminding them of that and they also um and when she chastises them they don't condemn her they don't say she's speaking out of place and she's only supposed to listen to them they listen to her they um they learn from her and they take their other uh, actions because of her um and so it, it is also said that in the palace um dropadi was always the last one to go to bed she would make sure that all of the subjects of the palace were taken care of everyone was taken care of all was well before she went to bed so that was the kind of role that she had um she was very active and and they they wanted they they gave that that space to her 
On the other hand, um, when you look at Dhritarashtra and uh, Duryodhana and, 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 and his brothers, not only do they not listen to Gandhari, uh, not only do they uh, ignore her, but they also do not accept the words of, uh, of Vidur or, or, um, or Pishma or anyone who speaks sense to them. Um, or if they do, like Dhritarashtra says, yes, you are right, but I cannot do anything. Fate is like this. So, so they may even listen, but they're unable, or not unable, they're unwilling uh, to act upon counsel, even when they know that it is that it is correct. Um, and so this blindness uh, of Dhritarashtra is actually very metaphorical. Uh, it's not just a physical blindness, but he has a brother, uh, Vidura, who cares so much for him, who's constantly by his side, who is constantly um, giving words of, uh, of advice, and uh, he refuses to listen. Uh, they only want to listen to Karna or to Shakuni, um, and, and not the people who can really teach them and who can help them actually um, find success. Um, and so not only do they turn away from uh, Gandhari, um, as a woman, but they turn away from, from wisdom uh, locally. Thank you so much, Aditi, ma'am. And this uh, really, you know, makes us think, especially that one sentence that you just said, when you follow the path of karma, each and every man of you, uh, person in our life is supposed to, we are supposed to learn from them, irrespective of where they come from or who they are. So that sentence really, you know, hit me somewhere in my heart. I'm going to remember that for a long time. So over to you, uh, Shruti ma'am, what would you like to point out? Uh, I, before uh, coming to this question, I would like to go one step back and see what was the situation when Pandu was there. So when, um, I think the situation not so different between, uh, would not have been different between Kauravas and Pandavas if the situation uh, was not the same. So when we come to, uh, when we, come one, one step back and analyze what was the situation when Pandu was there. Pandu never um, also did not listen to Kunti, I think, uh, when he was there. He never listened to uh, Kunti. He did not ask Kunti when, uh, when he was uh, getting married to the other wife of uh, other wife uh, Madri. He did not ask Kunti when he took decision uh, to retire in the forest at, um, in suddenly, all of sudden, and uh, to uh, renounce his kingdom. So, uh, but but then situation started differently. Things started happening differently after uh, death of Pandu. Uh, now, um, now Kunti is single mother, and the being single mother, she also has that hold on her children, and she she directed. Uh, uh, their life uh, single-handedly and we all agree that she has directed it so well and uh, she she has always been a constant uh, source of inspiration and uh, for her uh, children and the, and therefore in turn uh, she is able to uh, pass on right values uh, to her children because there is no other uh, influence on them and if we see the situation, um, Pandavas are being raised. Uh, most of the uh, they have spent most of their lifetime in forest. As compared to that, when we come to Gandhari situation, when we look, throw a light on uh, Kauravas upbringing, we we all know that it's not Gandhari who is directing their life. Their li life is being directed by their fa uh, father. He he is. Uh, king of the throne, uh, although uh, executionary king, but he is the king of the uh, throne. His, uh, their, their opinions, their actions, their judgments are also uh, influenced by brother of Gandhari. Shakuni is always there to misguide uh, Gandhari's children. And therefore, we, when we uh, compare these two situations, we see that Gandhari is not able to do duties of her motherhood in a uh, in a powerful manner i would say because of the uh, presence of uh, patriarch uh, patriarchy system and nobody um, nobody um, i would say that nobody 
paid heed to what she is saying as compared to that when it comes to uh, pandavas they they have because it's um, there is completely absence of pat patriarchy in their uh, in their context we see that their life is being rightly guided and uh, rightly influenced by women and in turn they learn how to respect women they learn how to uh, how to listen to them how to value their opinions and their judgment and um, kauravas never did that because when you see the elders in the family don't value their uh, don't value wife if if kids see that uh, husband uh, doesn't value his uh, wife's opinion they would not value their mother's opinion i think that's what happened in case of gandhari yes i can totally uh, see that really there is a big impact uh, on uh, kauravas that is their patriarchal system the lot of uh, negative you know influence from shakuni so yes that's really well put thank you so much uh, shruti ma'am for taking your time to explain this question so very well to us and uh, now i'd like to ask uh, about this uh, one uh, sentence so i would just want you to just comment on it what you think about it so she as in gandhari she built a house of dharma and she burns it up in the last leg of her life cursing krishna so do you think uh, this sentence that is that i have just quoted what are your thoughts about this does it stand true or is it just an action of a uh, ailing mother aditi ma'am if you could begin with the conversation sure um so i actually think we spent a lot of time focusing on the moments when she curses shri krishna um but there is a very beautiful lengthy passage before them where um you know she's granted a divine vision to see the the battlefield as it as it as it is uh, and this is you know at the end after the war has ended um and it's just full of corpses and um you know she she mentions and she names the different uh, uh the different warriors who are, who are slain um and you know there are heads that are severed from bodies and uh the widows have come to the field and they cannot see you know which is their husband because they're so the corpses are so mangled that they're not recognizable uh and gandhari is actually the voice that recounts to us this moment and the scene of all of the the corpses of all of the bereft family members on the battlefield um she names the warriors and without that you know a lot of things could have just been like nameless that we know so many millions have died but she personalizes it and it's very poignant and what she says is yes we were wrong and and we but we are frail humans like what what could we have done and so yes we are at fault but but you krishna you could have you are you know you are were brahman himself if you could have stopped this or you could have you, why did you let this pass and because all these women today here are are widowed or 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 have lost their sons then you too and your clan will go through this in, in 36 years and that's when she says um you know your clan will destroy itself um and so at that moment so i actually think what's more powerful than even her curse is is her ability uh, at this moment she regains her sight this enormous grief and empathy that she feels and she really stands in for the reader at that moment and she's the one who brings that to us and i think that is so poignant because it's not just about her 100 sons it's about the unimaginable loss that both sides have have suffered and she will never come back um and then you know she she pronounces the the curse and then krishna accepts the curse with a smile um and because that was part of his plan after all and, and then uh, but in the next moment what he says is princesses like you are born to give birth to sons who will die in in, in war and he turns it around and and points out that she herself kept saying that victory will go to the where there's karma there victory will come so that she she knew that her sons had brought it upon themselves and she herself knew that so he, he turns it around uh, to her and after that she just falls silent 
And I think the sadness of that moment is that she had that power um, at that moment and she loses it to pronounce a curse that really has no meaning. It was, you know, it's Krishna's plan all along. And in her heart, she knows that he's not really to blame. So she gives vent to this very understandable emotion and pathos within her, but it's futile. And she recognizes it's futile. And I think in that sense, she has spent at that moment, all the power, all the tapas she'd accumulated over so many decades of living. And it just gets wasted. It just gets kind of thrown away in this, in this moment. Um, and I think the, the, the bitterness of that and the sadness of that, I don't know if you can imagine, um, you know, losing 100 sons, like, you know, they're not just the uh, uh, number to her, but imagine the, uh, the grief of losing one son and multiplying that by 100. And the only one that is left to that is Mitsu, uh, who's not even her son. It's, it's, uh, Russia had, had, uh, uh, in fact, made it a maid of the palace. Uh, and her daughter has such a tragic life. She loses her, her husband. Um, and she also has a tragic life. And this is all that she's left with. Um, I think uh, you know, the grief and the, just the tragedy and the plight of Zantai is that having to live in this palace with the Pandava and never. Uh, sons of, of her, you know, the sounds of her children or, or her grandchildren. Um, so I think all of this is, it's, it's very, um, very sad. So I don't think that that was the moment that she burned everything up in terms of karma. I think was a culmination of, she had this tragic flaw in her, she had so much power and virtue, but she was never able quite able to channel it properly and at that moment she could have done something else that would have been perhaps more constructive uh, but she's not not able to so I think it wasn't a change in character at that moment it was a culmination of who she'd become in a very tragic and sad uh, sad way so there was a, a failure but I think so many decisions she had taken up until then culminated in that in that failure Thank you so much, Aditi, ma'am. That really stands true. There was a lot of, uh, you know, it was like a domino effect at the end where she actually lost whatever, uh, you know, uh, anger she had and it went on, just it played according to what uh, Krishna had planned. The, <laughs> he, he just played into it. This is a, it was truly futile. So thank you so much for pointing that out. Very well uh, said. We'll move on to Shruti, ma'am, for the same question. Do you think uh, she burned up her... Uh, Dharma by cursing Krishna. Uh, before answering uh, this question, I would like to uh, uh, mention that uh, Aditi ji has bring out this uh, curse of Gandhari so beautifully that um, her uh, perspective is so nice that a queen, uh, her uh, she has mentioned a queen who cursed the god and uh, what what perspective. Uh, you have brought to this curse of Gandhari is really wonderful, ma'am. So um, I would like to just <laughs> comment on this. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to admire uh, this wonderful take that you have taken. Uh, moving to my answer, uh, I would like to the I want I would like to think it little differently. Uh, we all know that Bhagavad Gita, uh, when when it starts, it's a conversation between Dhritarashtra and Sanjay. And so Dhritarashtra is narrating what is happening uh, at the battlefield of Purukshetra and to Dhritarashtra. It means Gandhari was also there when uh, Sanjaya was narrating uh, Bhagavad Gita to Dhritarashtra. And therefore, I think Gandhari is also... a uh, on, she is the only woman who has heard Bhagavad Gita while uh, Krishna was narrating it. But that time she was in dual state of her mind uh, because she she and she as a uh, for a kind of person uh, who has 
uh, who who is great in her austerities she can understand what is being narrated so therefore she can uh, see krishna as the as a cause of this war she does not uh, blame pa uh, pandava she could have cursed pandava and could have made the uh, test of their success beat up but then she curses krishna because she knows that he is the cause of this war but as a mother as a human being she she cannot bear the consequences of this and therefore she curses krishna for being cause of this war and i think uh, the way krishna accepts her curse shows that uh, even he he can understand how uh, what a human undergoes what, what is emotional turmoil of a human being and also to look at it little differently i think um, whenever she has been uh, saying whenever she has been trying to opine nobody listens to her her brother does not listen to her her husband does not listen to her her hundred sons not a single son listens to her she has never been heard and this is the only event of her life curse her curse to krishna is only uh, the uh, event where she is being heard and she is being valued yes thank you so much shruti ma'am that really uh, is in a refreshing take on this question because it really shows how uh, you know how much gandhari has to go through throughout this whole epic tale of mahabharat so moving on to the last question of today is that uh, gandhari was not able to express her human side i mean uh, whenever she did it it was in a negative way so does it mean that those who act very ideally in the uh, in the face of others do not, are not able to express their human side clearly they hide that they build a wall is that wall a strong enough for them or is it just a kind of a mask that they are wearing and when it falls off it's just going to be something uh, something uh, drastic what do you think about that is it truly what uh, gandhari has shown us this is a, it's such an excellent question um actually a lot of times people ask you know why write about that guy it was so long ago it's such a different you know there's there's no relevance in the modern day and actually it's so extremely relevant because even today we see so many women who do um who go through the self martyrdom or the sense that oh like you know i i'm in a difficult situation so i'm just going to do something like maybe i'll quit my job even if i don't want to because i feel like my family expects me to or i have a dream but i'm not going to follow it because my parents will disapprove and on the one hand there's so much conditioning that we go through that we think we should do this but if if we don't know ourselves and if we don't reflect on ourselves if we make decisions um without taking responsibility for them then this kind of thing happens if it's like if you do something but in your heart you don't really want to do it or you don't really believe in it what will happen is you'll just start resenting um first you'll resent and you'll think others are to blame for what you chose to do and in the end you end up resenting yourself and it leads to so much bitterness and the the decision you thought you're making for others not only does it hurt yourself but it hurts the others because now they're someone who can't um, who has so much resentment towards them it's very corrosive for relationships uh, so dhritarashtra for example um he is not benefited by vandhari blindfolding herself if she's always so unhappy about it uh cuz he's feeling the brunt of her 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 bitterness and her unhappiness and her resentment and she herself corrodes herself and just in the end all she is is, is bitter um uh, and so what that means is you know you have to especially for women knowing ourselves knowing our our limits like what is it we're willing to do what is it that's too far and being able to honestly express that so absolutely we have to care for others we have to sacrifice for others um but in reality is we have more choices but every time we make a choice we have to really think about that and think about also what do we 
a need for ourselves to replenish ourselves, to be content within ourselves, and to express that honestly. Uh, because there's no no shame in doing that, and there's nothing wrong in doing that. That's actually the best thing we can do, not just for ourselves, but for our families and our relationships. Uh, in the case of Danpari, she only had maybe one or two decisions that she was free to make. Um, the decision to blindfold or her not blindfold herself may have been uh, the only decision she could make. As uh, as Shruti Ji has been saying, her life was dominated by by men. And she didn't have the opportunity to uh, to express herself or to have decisions. And so that one decision meant, um, you know, so, so when you have few decisions, then you have to be very careful with those. Um, and so I think that's very important for women today, and that's something that we can um, that that we can we can relate to. Uh, and so um, and, and so we shouldn't do things that make us, you know, that we're not comfortable with or that we don't believe in because it does it just does start uh, even if we think it's ideal um, if, if it's not in, a, in, a, in our hearts then it's not going to lead to a good result it's better to be less than ideal but to be honest about it um, because that actually is much much healthier than holding ourselves up to ideals we cannot live up to and part of being uh, part of you know we have we have so much emphasis on satyam and, and on truth, and the self honesty is actually where where it really begins. Thank you. That's really true. Self honesty has to be a priority for everyone, especially women. We tend to be very uh, sacrificial for others, so sometimes we need to make hard decisions, but we need to really uh, do it for our own as well as others' happiness. Thank you so much, Aditi, ma'am, for bringing that forward. Now, I'd like to pass on the same question to Shruti, ma'am. What's your take for, on this? Uh, I agree uh, with Aditi ji that we have to be uh, self-honest and sometimes we also have to think for others. I think uh, uh, this is one thing, uh, most important thing in Gandhari's life. Uh, she, uh, we can look at her, her if we throw light of uh, on entire of her life we always say uh, we always see that there are so many conflicts in her life for example uh, uh, starting from her marriage she uh, we all know the story that bhishma comes and um, ask uh, for her hand and she she as a princess of a kingdom she knows that um, kuru dynasty is a uh, wealthier and uh, powerful kingdom and if she denies this proposal it could be harmful for her own kingdom and therefore as a young princess she sacrificed her person uh, personal interest for the interest of her kingdom then when uh, when she takes vow uh, she she uh, sacrifices her uh, vision then uh, when it comes to uh, the her motherhood she has to sacrifice because uh, she has to sacrifice uh, when she listens uh, to this news and when uh, uh, Dhritarashtra has been uh, insisting that she uh, she should deliver as soon as possible. We all know she, she goes to such an extent that she stuck uh, her uh, warm with a weapon. And, uh, uh, and therefore, we all see that there are so many conflicts in her life and it, this conflict or actually she is righteous she is uh, she is uh, very uh, strong person but she is like a ray trap in the empire of darkness and we all have done this experiment in our uh, life that when we uh, put a lens to uh, towards the rays of the sun it can burn the paper and i think this exactly what happens with, uh, with uh, gandhari that her emotions are so uh, trapped than when uh, they get a, a kind of um, way out. They come out so strongly and we all know what happens. Yes, so nicely put uh, Shruti ma'am and I think this relates to us uh, very much especially during this pandemic as we all are bottled up at home. We shouldn't bottle up our emotions be very uh, clear and uh, be very uh, you know make decisions in this lockdown but keep in mind for all the others that are with you as well we shouldn't just be sacrificing our own self for others 
so thank you so much uh, for uh, answering these amazing questions and i myself feel very enlightened talking with both of you the reader and me is quite honored to be talking with two of the authors whose books i have just recently finished and absolutely loved